Hello, and welcome to Scott's Odyssey. Growing up in Pennsylvania, I didn't realize how many people are unfamiliar with bridges. Not just any bridges, but specifically a type of bridge that numbered somewhere about 14,000 back in 1825 through 1875, and now have dwindled to not much more than 800. I'm talking about a kissing bridge, or more accurately, the covered bridge. See you in a minute. Welcome back. If you've watched my videos before, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoy this visit to a Pennsylvania covered bridge. Click like to show me you like this video. Click subscribe because that increases the chances of you seeing these videos when released and lowers my chances of selling my pinky toe in order to pay my mortgage this month. Because, well, I need my pinky toe to maintain my balance while on these adventures. If you're new to Scott's Odyssey, welcome aboard. And please take a moment to click that subscribe for more of this journey through Odyssey's stories of who we once were. Man's ability to cross a stream, a river, or even a gorge has had a dependency on our ability to fasten together some form of rocks, timber, or twine in order to make a shortcut to get over these obstructions. The most common form is what we call a bridge. Over time, we realized that not only was building a bridge arduous when crossing chasms and fast moving or deep waters, but doubly difficult when we had to make it again due to the elements of nature taking back the wood or twine simply through a process of rot. With an average lifespan of not more than 20 years exposed, someone figured out that if you just cover the bridge, you can crank out over 100 years of perpetual use with little to no upkeep over time. During my explorations of odd-to-see locations through Pennsylvania, I've come across a covered bridge about every two or three episodes. To me, they're a common sight to see. And then it was brought to my attention that not only was it not common or uncommon, but actually very obscure and rare at best. So, I did a little research to find something out about the covered bridges. As it turns out, Pennsylvania is home to over 219 still-in-use covered bridges. There's one just a couple of neighborhoods over from Odyssey's headquarters. Mind you, it's the only one left standing in Huntington County, but it's literally in my backyard. When I jump over one county, there are over 14 of these 100 to 130-year-old bridges within a 25-mile radius of each other. After digging a little deeper, it seems that the second most covered bridge populated state is Pennsylvania's neighbor, Ohio, with just 125. Beyond that, the numbers drop into the extremely low double digits and mostly single digits for about 20 other states, more frighteningly leaving 30 states with no idea about what these intrinsically beautiful structures are. So before we begin, let's get some definitions out of the way. A covered bridge is not a bridge with a roof. It's a bridge that is fully covered with a roof, it's got decking and siding. Essentially, it's a barn that crosses an obstacle with a door on both sides. And the reason for covering the bridge, as stated earlier, is so that the elements do not cause the more functional portion of the bridge to rot. Functional portion of the bridge are the trusses and longitudinal timbers that cross over the obstruction. You see, the decking is technically not part of a bridge, nor the panels, nor the roof. A bridge is not part of a road, it is not the road itself. The bridge, by definition, carries the road across the obstruction just as the road carries you across a field or a mountain. Whatever other reason you've heard for why a covered bridge is covered is just a myth or a fantastical story made up by someone who didn't really know, like calling it a kissing bridge which was the common name because the teens used to hang out on the bridge to perform those nefarious acts of courtship beyond the watchful eye of the elders and sneak a kiss. Let me know in the comments below if you know of stories about covered bridges in your location. My research is limited by the information that people don't share openly. Help me break that barrier and let's share the history 
and culture of who we once were. Today I'm at what is commonly called St. Mary's Covered Bridge. It's also known as Shade Gap Covered Bridge, Huntington County Bridge Number 8, and according to the World Guide to Covered Bridges, the less romantic name of 383101. And if you really want to get unromantic about this National Register of Historic Places, they call it site number 8000-3503. The original name of the bridge doesn't seem to have existed or is unknown because it was just a bridge built to cross Shade Creek. So, as was often done back in the day, the name of the bridge would have been designated by what you saw along the route before you crossed the bridge. In this instance, that would be the Roman Catholic Church built in the mid-1840s named St. Mary's. And, well, the bridge was built directly across the road in 1896. Although the National Historic Register plaque states 1889, we most definitively know that to be inaccurate because we found the Huntington County Commissioner's meeting books opening a bid for a bridge here and an award to build the bridge for $540 in the April 1896 minutes. The bridge design is a Hal Through Truss, one of the last four in that design in Pennsylvania. With a total length of 66 feet, 10 and 2 thirds inches, a span length of 62 feet, a deck 13 1 and 1 quarter inches wide, an open clearance of exactly 11 feet with a peak almost 14 feet, St. Mary's Covered Bridge is located in Cromwell Township of Huntington, Pennsylvania, along the side of U.S. Route 522 and carries the Covered Bridge Road across Shade Creek. This covered bridge was repaired for minor wear and tear in 1982, and it was also retrofitted with four 27-inch steel I-beams under the original longitudinal timbers, making it a single-span I-beam bridge in modern terms meaning it's a single span and has no other supports or piers beyond the original stone abutments on either side of the waterway. It's no secret that a majority of Pennsylvanians that live outside the large cities believe in preservation and conservation. They like the preservation of things that were simpler and prettier and the conservation of nature. 
I mean, why wouldn't you? We have four perfectly separated seasons that give us new colors, new sights, and new smells to experience every three months. What's better to have in the backsplash of the mind eye, but a utopian picture of architecture that blends perfectly with nature and all the tales and stories we were told as children and read about in books. It's a much better image than the bleakness that truly existed in this state's formative years during the Industrial Revolution. So I'm going to start documenting these bridges as I happen upon them so you can experience something that I thought was common but actually turns out to be an odd to see structure of who we once were. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next video. Time to go fishing. Some trout in here.